What's going on, everybody? I'm back to play another match up against the ghost. Except this time, I'm really going to play. So there'll be no special ghosting effect, and I won't be missing on purpose. Now, in this match, I decided to try the ghost in a game of 8-ball for a race to 3. And the rules that I'll be playing by are that I have to perform a legal break, meaning that at least 4 balls have to hit a rail, or I have to make a ball on the break. I will be taking ball in hand after the break, and if I scratch on the break, or if I don't run out, that's considered a loss. Now throughout the match, you're going to hear me talk about what I'm thinking about and what I'm going to try to do. So that way you can hear my thought process and see what I do when things go according to plan and see what I do when things don't. So let's get started. Now the first strategy I want to mention is the break. Because when I'm playing the ghost in 8-ball, I'm more concerned about there hardly being any clutters on the table after the break instead of making a ball. And that's why you're going to see me break more head-on from the middle of the table. So with this race to three, let's see how this first rack goes. Okay, we made a stripe on the break. And because of our 14 ball being where it's at, this is going to be our opening shot. So from the 14, we're going to draw back for position on the 9 ball for the corner pocket. Not sure if I can move this. No, nope. we're gonna leave it right where it's at. Okay, so from the nine ball, we're now just gonna stun over to the middle of the table for position on the ten. And then from the ten, play a stop shot for the twelve. So now if we look, we can see that our eight ball is most likely going to go into this corner pocket, which means we want to use the 15 ball as our last ball. So from the 12, we're going to be playing position for the 13 ball. Now we can have the cue ball hit the side rail and come back for position on the 15 ball. And then pretty much do the same exact thing for position on the 8 ball. Eight ball, corner pocket. Okay, we're off to a good start. All right, one to zero. Let's see if I can make it two. Made a stripe on the break. Eight 
And I think our opening shot is going to be the 13 ball. And I'm going to make the cue ball nudge the 8 ball a little bit and shoot the 9 next. Okay, so if we look at the layout of the table from here, we're more than likely going to use the 14 ball for position on the 8 into that corner pocket. So now when I shoot the 9, I'm going to be coming down here for the 10, 15, and the 11. From the position that I'm in, I think we're going to play for the 10 ball next. So I think from the 10 ball, because the 1 and the 4 are there, we're actually going to try to draw behind them over to the side rail and back to the middle of the table for the 15 or the 11. Well, that worked out better than I thought. We didn't have to use the side rail. Now we're just going to roll the 15 into the side pocket and have the cue ball come up here for position on the 11. Well, we have an angle on the 11 that isn't really good. I would have liked to be right about here so that I can draw back for position on the 14 ball. Because now what I think I'm going to have to do is allow the cue ball to come forward, hit this side rail, and then try to bounce back out into the open. Well, believe it or not, I'm actually a little hooked behind the two ball. So we are going to try a small jump shot. Whew. Eight ball, corner pocket. Whew. All right, let's see if I can make it three in a row. <laughs> oh, no. So much for a shutout. Two to one. All right, let's try not to do that again. Okay, I think that's actually three times in a row that we've been stripes. Now if we look at the layout of the table, we can see that our 8-ball can go here, but our 10-ball 
is the hardest ball on the table. It also does not look like the 10 ball passes by the 7. Yeah, it does not. So we need to deal with that as soon as possible. And then our 15 ball is also an issue being at this end of the table. So I think what I can do, I can start with the 14 ball at this angle here. That way I can try to draw into the 10 ball and move it. And because I'm coming over here anyway, I should be able to have a shot on the 12 ball. Let's see how that works out. Well, I drew a little too far, but fortunately, we have a shot on the 10 ball, or we can shoot the 15 ball. And because of my 12 ball, I'm not going to shoot the 10 ball. I don't want to bridge over the 12 ball, so we're going to try the 15 ball. Pretty much, we're going to have the cue ball go from one side rail to the other. We'd like to land somewhere near the middle of the table, so we have some options. Okay, not quite in the middle of the table, but we do have a shot on the 13 ball. So we'll be having the cue ball hit the side rail and then come back somewhere over here for the 12 or the 10. Looks like we'll be getting position for the 10. Because now we can have the cue ball go from one side rail to the other and try to land in the middle of the table. Now the eight ball only goes into this corner pocket unless I want to risk let me see if I can get the magic rack out of the way. All right. Or I could risk this position for the eight in the side. And I think that's what I'm going to try to do because it requires a lot less movement on the cue ball. All right, eight ball, side pocket. And there you have it, everybody. I was able to win the match three to one, all because I scratched on the break in that third game. Now with me commentating out loud like that, that really lets me know what I need to work on in my game. Like how you saw the cue ball didn't always end up where I thought it would and I had to change my plan. Letting me know that I need to work on my cue ball control, which I'm constantly working on, as well as my speed control. Now, let me know what you think about the patterns that I played, especially if you disagree with them or had a different route that you would have taken. Now with this format, this is probably something that I can do every other week or once a month. And I can even change the games to where I'm playing nine ball or 10 ball or change the rules to make it more difficult, like not use the magic rack, or I have to make a ball on the break, otherwise it's considered a loss, or not take ball in hand. The next video that I do on this is probably gonna be a game of nine ball. So if you like what you saw, 
give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And here's the winner of my raffle where Bryce was nice enough to send me a few photos. Take care, everybody.